Welcome to Casson Academy. It's been a while since my last recording because of uh, coronavirus, of course. We are now in lockdown, so uh, as you can see, I'm not in my uh, normal studio. I'm just at home, and I have to make do with everything, including taping the microphone together because this is not our usual environment, but we'll have to make do. So we're going to go through a display, smart display campaigns today. We're going to show you how to set up a smart display campaign, how easy it is, how quick it is. And uh, this is an automated method, so it's much faster to set up than a regular display campaign, which has audiences and all that sort of stuff. So a smart display campaign is really good if you don't have too much time. You don't want to think about how many audiences you need to target or what type of audiences. Uh, and you just want to get a campaign up and running that can actually perform pretty well. So I'm going to show you how to create that smart display campaign, how easy it is, uh, so that you have something to go by. So I'm going to switch over to our... There we go. So here you can see uh, the AdWords account. We've worked in it before. We're going to add a new campaign. And we're going to choose either sales or leads. Uh, generally, Smart Display Campaigns runs well on some sort of conversion base. So if you've got conversions running in your account, you want to choose either the leads or the sales. So if you've got products, you want to choose sales. Otherwise, if you've got some sort of conversion on the site, you want to choose leads. Now, Casson Academy, the page that we're going to target today, uh, we want to get as many people to watch the actual lessons as possible. So we do have leads set up, so we're going to choose the leads option. If you don't have conversion set up, then you can choose one of the other options. Or if you're a big brand and you want to get a lot of awareness or reach out there, uh, you can choose one of the reach-based models. But in this session, we're going to show you how to get as many leads as possible, whether it's uh, filling in a form or watching a video or whatever it might be. So long as you've got that goal in mind, we're going to choose leads. Then we're going to go down and we're going to choose the display option. Be careful, there is a little smart option right down here in the corner. This is not a smart display campaign. Uh, very confusing that they're so close together. Uh, this is just a smart automated campaign that's not very smart at all. So we're going to go to the display option right here. We're going to choose display and it's going to drop down to the next section. Yeah, you can see there is the standard display campaign. With that one, you have to choose your audiences. You've got to know what sort of targeting that you're doing on the site, uh, whether you want to do affinity or in-market audiences, which we're going to cover in the very next session. Uh, but in this case, we want to do something fast and uh, automated. So we're going to choose Smart Display Campaign. And Google's going to optimize the bidding. Google's going to do the targeting. There's not much you really have to do in this campaign. Google will learn how to perform in this campaign so long as you're getting those conversions. Uh, really good, very effective campaign if you have a lot of conversions in the account. Um, it will continue to get them at a better rate uh, more and more. It's time of day, you name it, all the optimization, all the performance takes place there. Of course, we do need a, a landing page. We're going to target our remarketing page here, our video from last time. And we want to get as many people to start the course as possible. So we've got tracking on the course button. And uh, we're going to try and see how many people we can get to actually start the course. And that's the objective of the campaign here. So we're going to take the URL. And we're going to put it in to the website option, which Google's going to use that to try to get the content off your page. OK, now we give it a name. Of course, uh, we've been over this before. This is going to be a, a display campaign. And it's going to be targeting South Africa. It's a smart campaign. And it's for a course. And that course is remarketing course. That's our target topic. Uh, you can choose every single location like I showed you in previous videos, which is better than just choosing the whole of South Africa or the whole of a country. You want to go through that option. But just for time, we're going to just choose South Africa for now. And we're going to go down to the next piece. Now, here you can see that uh, automatically it's going to try and push maximize conversions, which in display is, uh, smart display campaigns is actually the best option in the beginning. So if you don't have conversions set up on your site, then obviously max conversions doesn't make any sense. But if you do have conversions set up, then 
uh, yeah, allow it to try get as many conversions for your budget as possible. So it's a very good option there. You can also choose a CPA based model. So you can say target cost per acquisition or cost per action. And you can say, see Google give you a recommendation. It costs you about 99 bucks to get an acquisition. So you can try and do it that way uh, as well from the start. So it's really a matter of preference. Uh, in the beginning, I'm not too sure what the CPA could be. So I generally like to choose the max conversions options uh, and set a lower budget. If I choose the CPA um, option, then I would choose a higher budget uh, just to give it some room to improve. So we're going to leave it on max conversions there. Just know that the other models are still there. They're hiding in the back end. You see, you can see ROAS and so on and so on. You can see different uh, targeting options in there. Okay. Of course, Google says not to recommend it, but some of them actually really work. So now I'm going to set a budget per day. You can do dynamic ads. In other words, you can pull in dynamic data from a spreadsheet as an example. So if you want to personalize your ads and you've got five different courses and those courses all run uh, with different variables and different costs, you can put them all on a, a sheet in one line and that will allow you to bring that dynamic data into your display ads. Now, uh, you got to give it an ad name. So I'm going to take the campaign name. I'm going to go down and I'm going to put the ad group name with the AG at the end. Now right here, you can see it's all saying you don't need any targeting. Why? Because this is a smart display campaign and Google's going to automate that targeting according to the users. I'm not talking to you on my phone, Google. Okay. So um, yeah, here you can see we can skip all of that audience-based uh, um, targeting because it's all automated already. Now we're going to go down to the ad creation. We're going to create a responsive display ad. Uh, responsive meaning that it will work on all device sizes. It might not look the prettiest, but it will has a much bigger reach than if you were to create the banners and upload the banners like uh, we used to with the older um, campaign types. So we're going to go straight to images and logos. Where we're going to upload some creative. It's going to scan the site and it's going to come up with uh, images that are on the site or linked from the site. And so here you can see the banana man. We're going to take him because he is actually on that landing page right there. Google's taken it off that landing page. And just make sure with the square that it makes sense and you're not cutting something off. So there's your square option. There's your rectangular option. Adjust it a little bit. Continue. And Google also allows you to pull in stock images. If you're not happy with the image set that Google's giving you here from the scan from the page, you can upload your own videos. And here you can see I can choose a file from my computer. And now I can choose some of the creative from the other. There's one from Maps. So let's add this one and see how that does. Could use probably use this as the square image. Again, you might have to align it. Okay, and I can go and find myself a logo. There's a logo right there, square one. So in the drop down, you can see it says use image as, and this is a logo, so I'm going to say use as logo, and that's fine for the square logo. It's still telling me I need a rectangular base logo. So I'm going to add again. This time I'm going to find a rectangle logo. Now let's see if this one is going to work. Nope, it says that one's the wrong size. So it will actually tell you if you're getting the wrong dimension. It's saying that dimension is there. We go. There's one there. This one will probably cut off a little bit use as an, a logo. You can see with the rectangle, it's not the perfect size. So you're going to have to try and make that perfect size if possible. If you don't know what the sizes are, you can actually hover over this little question mark and there's the, uh, the actual sizes. So it's always better to, to actually make those logos according to the sizes that are on here. So that square should be 1200 by 1200 
and that rectangle could be uh, 1200 let's just see the rectangle 1200 by 300 for the rectangle based one and I'm going to upload a couple more variations so let's go back to a variation there we go So you don't have to only have one, you can have more than one. This time I'm not going to choose that, that one's fine. Actually, no, let's leave that. Pull this in a little bit. Okay. Now you can put as much creative in here uh, that you need. You can put as many uh, variations of the logo that you need. You can see Google will only use one of them anyway. Uh, at a time so it's not going to mash them together it also takes the the colors that you're using on the image and you can see the yellow was at the bottom on this one it's green so it's showing green so it basically takes some of the colors from the images and starts to use those you can see next down is a video you can go to a YouTube video you can copy the link there's our setup remarketing video and you can put it into the video spot go it's found it's of you got to have a channel and you have to have a YouTube video in order to do that option and then it's going to ask for five different headlines so the headlines you can take from the page set up remarketing in analytics no nope, that's going to fit so just remarketing is good here uh, if you go too far it's going to turn red learn remarketing online how to do remarketing question mark if you double click it will actually give you some suggestions that one's a little bit sh short I can do a little bit broader here and we need one more I'm not gonna say Google Ads I'm gonna say ads and analytics because if I say the word Google Google's probably gonna shut it down Okay, then I'm going to need a longer headline. This one's a little bit longer. It goes all the way up to 90 characters. So let's go take this off the bottom here. That looks about 90 characters. You get used to the character count. The more ads you do. There we go. Exactly 90. And then descriptions. And I need a couple other descriptions. Benefits of using remarketing lists. What else do we have? That looks good. Just to make sure that you're consistent. So if you're capitalizing the first letter of every word, you want to make sure you're always doing that across the board. generic one don't be lazy make sure that you fill out all of them 
the more you fill out, the more that Google has to learn. So Google's going to learn which combinations work the best, and it's going to allow those ads to show more often. So if you haven't filled anything in here, it's not going to learn on much. So you've got to give it some leeway. You want to do all five of the headlines and all five of the descriptions and the long headline. And then you're going to give yourself a business name. And you can just sit and watch them for a second just to make sure that they make sense. If they look okay. And you can preview them also on desktop. Desktop, in my opinion, is a little bit uglier. Uh, they don't always get the, the colors right or the spacing right. Um, but it gives you a good idea of what it's going to use. Uh, the arrows that are on there, they generally try to bring, bring it from the content of the landing page, the same sort of colors. Uh, it will use there. See, every now and then you might get one that's exactly the same color, which is good. Okay, so you can just preview through there. And then on the side here, you can actually see the reach, the estimated reach for your smart campaign. So it's telling you for 100 bucks, you should be getting 700 to 1,800 clicks in a month, I mean, in a day. So... Uh, yeah, it's quite a good uh, reach and amount of clicks there. A uh, pretty good estimate. Okay, once you're finished uh, inputting all of that, you can just push create campaign. And then go to your campaign. And there we go. We've got ourselves a smart display campaign. It's pretty easy to set up. Uh, when I go into it, uh, you can see under the audiences tab it does allow me to exclude audiences so it's a, it does have a little bit of control if there's some sort of audience that comes in that you don't want you can still do an audience uh, exclusion from there but the rest you don't have any control about uh, you'll you'll just have to do with what uh, Google's uh, targeting what Google's uh, adjusting uh, it's really a set it and forget it type of uh, campaign and when these perform, they perform very well. So just keep that in mind. Uh, try it out. Give it a short shot with a smaller budget, like uh, 50 or 100 bucks a day if you're starting out. And just let it run. See the sort of impressions you got. If you've got conversions set up, then uh, it's, it's going to be a uh, pretty well-performed uh, campaign. If you're in a niche market and you're not getting a lot of leads into the account anyway, then it's going to be hard for it to, tr to uh, perform on max conversions so just keep that in mind so next time we're going to go through the more advanced standard uh, setup of uh, display campaigns much harder to set up because you have to actually choose audiences but we'll do that in the next session uh, so see you then thanks guys